Uh, my key ones has been in the street now for three days asking for freedom and this is really important to say because the key one government is making fake news so it's really important to say my key ones start a protest in a really pacific way asking for freedom and the government respond to them putting militaries and police in the street shooting them hitting them killing them and the only thing that they have to defend themselves is the social medias and they even cut internet so they can show out what is happening inside there. So I have a really hole in my heart with this situation and I want to ask you, help us, help me to help the mothers that today doesn't know what is their sons, the sons that doesn't know what is their fathers because it's a lot of people that just disappear. It's a lot of kids that they just kill. It's a lot of young people that they are killing. They are recruiting teenagers in their house. They take them and they are obligated to go out to fight with his own brothers and sisters in the street. And this, if they don't do it, they go to jail. Cuban government get help now from Venezuela with more militaries to continue killing my people. We are alone and no one say nothing, nothing. No one say about my people. So help me to tell to my Cuban people that they are not alone. Help me, help us to share every news, to tell the rest of the world what is happening in Cuba, because it's the only thing that we have. My Cubans are still fighting there in front really strong. Even when they kill a lot of them, and they have nothing more than just this social media. So please help us to share everything. Help us to tell what is happening with Cuba right now. Please share the news, share this video. Please, this is really important, please. It's like no one's care. And this is not about politics. This is about humanity. It's our obligation as humans when we see something that is not fair to say this is not fair and this is not fair with my people. Please, 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 S O S for Cuba, please. What's up, y'all? So, I woke up this afternoon, I worked all night, I went to sleep at like seven in the morning, got up and my DMs were blowing up. Uh, because of a statement that was on the Black Lives Matter Instagram handle regarding Cuba. Uh, I was asked to address it, being a black man born in the United States of America, living as a black man in the US and dealing with everything that black people have to deal with, but also having Cuban heritage coming from a family who immigrated to the United States to give me opportunities that they did not have under an oppressive, a systemic oppressive system, oppressive to a point where you cannot believe exists no First Amendment rights of protest no freedom of speech, no second amendment, no one has any weapons, you can't defend yourself. And if you even think of speaking against the government, even in a whisper, you will get ratted out by your neighbors. Every neighborhood has a government rat and you will be jailed. You can't even criticize them. That's the reality of a dictatorship. That's the reality of life in Cuba. The social justice movement that we're witnessing right now in Cuba was started by black Cubans, Afro Cubans. If you wanna see who they are, go to YouTube and look up Patria y Vida, P-A-T-R-I-A-Y-V-I-D-A. -I -I it stands for country, land, and life. And you will see black Latins rapping 
about the need for freedom in their homeland because art and anything else that you want to achieve is systemically oppressed and silenced and jailed and probably killed. There are hundreds of missing artists right now who have gone missing. There are thousands of Cubans that have gone missing since Sunday when this uprising began. Black Cubans make up 50% of the island and they are disproportionately affected by this systemic oppression. Only there they have no First Amendment right to protest. Cubans make about $18 a month, no matter what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, the most educated to cab drivers. Cab drivers actually make more than doctors because they get tips, no matter what you do. It has become a place where people have been forced into sex slavery because there's a tremendous amount of sex tur tourism. They know they can go and find somebody to have sex with, man or woman, for 30, 40 bucks, 50, 50 about 50 dollars, which is more money than they would make working three, four months if they didn't. That includes children, folks. Children selling their bodies to help their families afford food. The stores only accept dollars now, but Cubans don't get paid in dollars. They get paid in a currency which is worthless outside of Cuba, and now it's even worse, worthless inside of Cuba. And Cuba has been denying any type of humanitarian aid, and it has been rejecting any aid that Cuban Americans want to send back home to their families. There is a genocide going on right now. This is a genocide. They are currently shooting protesters, which started off as nonviolent passive protesters, who for the first time in 62 years said enough is enough and went out and spoke against the systemic oppression. And it turned into not rubber bullets, real bullets, being shot at, sticks, people getting beaten to death, young teenage boys getting kidnapped from their homes at all hours of the day and night and forced into fighting against their own people or they will get beaten to death in front of their people so that people are afraid. This is a militarized, violent police state. Cuba participates in something called medical slavery. I know you guys never heard of medical slavery, but let me explain what that is. Cuba exports all their doctors. I know you've seen it all. Oh, Cuba sending doctors here, sending doctors there. You think it's a humanitarian thing, no? Mm -mm. Cuba used to make their money from sugar, cigars, rum. Now they make it from exporting doctors. They charge governments three to $400,000 a month per doctor. And those doctors don't even make 2% of that to send home to their families, but they have to go. Because as you know, slavery is not a choice, never was. They either go or they're jailed. And let's not even talk about what happens to their families. People, I'm tired of always having to explain that the idea of healthcare on that island is a joke. It's a joke. There is no food. Well, I'll take that back. There's food for tourists. There's food for the powers that be, the people that run the island. There's food in grocery stores that only tourists can go to. If a Cuban tries to go in there, they'll be jailed. Cubans can't go into a hotel that tourists stay at. They are not allowed to see what exists on that island. That's only for tourists. They have to go to their Cuban grocery stores, which are bare, bare. 
pound of rice costs more than what they make in a month. There's no water, no running water. If you want water, you gotta wait for the water truck to show up and you better have your buckets and your cups and your jugs ready. Whatever you can carry, that's the water you got till the next time the water truck shows up. God knows when that is. Forget about any real internet or Wi-Fi. You gotta stand outside of a hotel and steal it. Steal the signal. And that's only when it works. Forget about electricity. They shut it off whenever they want. Imagine a government party that you hate or a president that you absolutely hate being in power for 62 years and you cannot vote them out. You cannot vote them out. 62 years of a president or a party that you, that does not represent you, that oppresses you, that steps on you, that doesn't speak for you, that doesn't give you the bare basic human needs that you need, and you're forced to accept them for 62 years. Imagine that. And don't tell me that Cuba is only messed up because of the embargo. Mm -mm. Don't tell me that this right now is happening because of an embargo. Because the embargo started in 1962. You can Google that, 1962. And now, people have had enough saying about an embargo. This is about systemic oppression. This is about what the people of Cuba are yelling when they're in the streets fighting for freedom. Libertad is what they're yelling, not end the embargo. They're yelling libertad, that's all they want. They wanna be able to study what they wanna study. They wanna be able to start their own businesses if they want to. They wanna be able to earn money the same way we do. They wanna be able to elect their leaders the same way we do. That's what Cubans are fighting for right now. They're fighting for freedom. To reduce it to an embargo is unethical. It's insensitive. It's tone deaf. And it is willfully ignorant. If you wanna know what's wrong with people, Listen to them. Cubans are crying and dying for freedom. Thank you. This is a message to the world. We need to stand up, step up. But if you don't understand what's going on, then you need to wake the fuck up. Not only is this a Cuba event, a Cuba thing, this is a world event. This isn't about politics. This is about saving lives. This is about unity, not division. And bottom line, this is about taking action. Let me tell you something, why I'm frustrated and, and when I see everybody out there and doing what they're doing, which I love what they're doing, okay? Because not only do we live for freedom, we ride for freedom, we die for freedom, but we motherfucking appreciate freedom. And it, it gets me hot, it bothers me, and it frustrates me to a certain extent, being a Cuban-American, and having a platform to speak to the world and not being able to help my own people. Not being able to get them food, not being able to get them water, not being able to get them medicine. But most of all, not being able to help and really get them what they deserve, which is freedom. And this is my way of talking to the world. All world allies get together to help. Global businesses get together to help. People that we're so proud of, people such as a Jeff Bezos, Cuban American, graduated from a high school in Miami, built one of the biggest companies in the world, the richest man in the world. He's somebody that can get involved and really help us 
on what we got. All we can do is create awareness, but politics are gonna be politics. And while they figure out what they figure out, we need to figure out how to really help. We need to get creative. We need to figure out solutions while they're losing their lives over there literally for something that we wake up every day and appreciate, which is freedom. So to everybody out there, stand up, step up, and if you don't understand, get with the motherfucking program and wake up. Because this is about freedom and it's about human rights. And to everybody in Cuba, keep the fight up. Para todos los cubanos que están allá afuera y todo lo que está pasando en Cuba ahora mismo. Ustedes son lo que va a motivar el mundo, inspirar el mundo para, para que vean lo que es de verdad vivir y morir por la libertad.